Hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. In this video I'm going to do a little different video than what I normally do which is working on cars. I'm going to kind of focus on this uh, tire changer that I got from Harbor Freight. And um, I've made a couple videos in the past that were actually quite popular. And uh, anyway, since then a lot of questions have arisen regarding this unit. And so I figured I'd take this opportunity to go ahead and answer those questions. And also at the same time get new tires onto this 97 Cobra. Now, if you've been following me, um, the last project that I had was this 97 Cobra, and um, we got this thing with it uh, not running, the motor had seized, it was all disassembled, and we had a variety of parts and things laying around. And uh, anyway, it took uh, 21 videos for us to go through the whole process of getting this thing back up on the road and running, and also that spanned over the course of seven months. So this was quite a large project. But anyway, we got it back on the road and running, However, the tires on this thing are very old. This thing has not been on the road, I believe, since 2016. And uh, just kind of been sitting in various people's driveways, uh, just falling apart. So anyway, one of the things that was falling apart were these tires. I got this thing back on the road and I then started looking at the tires and they're in very bad shape. Uh, they were manufactured in 2014, so they're about 10 years old. The rubber has gotten hard and brittle and there's some uh, parts of the tread where rubber is chunking out. And uh, quite frankly, it's just not safe to drive on them anymore. So I just went ahead and ordered up some uh, new tires. They're supposed to show up today. So I figured I'd get a head start and uh, at least get the wheels uh, off the car and uh, dismount the tires. And I also want to take this opportunity to address some things I didn't in my other tire change videos regarding the Harbor Freight tire changer along with the Lucid adapter. So anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this uh, car has not been driven for a number of years. And uh, so that uh, leads me to believe the tires are old. And if we take a look here at the date in which this was manufactured, it was manufactured the 15th week of 2014. Well, it's uh, 2024 now, so these tires are 10 years old. And I have found some places, although I don't see it right here, there are some places on the tire where <clears throat> chunks of rubber are starting to come apart. The rubber is getting hard and brittle, and it's just getting to the point where it's dangerous. So we're going to go ahead and replace these with brand new tires. Looks like they have arrived. All right, looks like the new tires are here. Uh, the size of tires that we're putting on are 245 slash 45 R17s. So these shouldn't be too bad. It can get difficult using this tire changer when you go to a real low profile tire. But uh, here's kind of uh, the limit. I wouldn't want to go much uh, thinner wall than this, um, but this should be just fine. And hey, looks like we got our helper here. Yeah, when we mount these up, we'll have to be careful uh, which side is what. Uh, these tires are labeled here uh, outside, so we'll have to make sure that this goes on the exterior part of the wheel. However, I don't believe these are rotational. If they're rotational, they usually have a little arrow pointing in the direction in which they would rotate when the car is going forward. Now, one of the things I didn't make clear on the previous video was that the tire changer itself comes from Harbor Freight. However, this adapter that I'm using on the top does not. I purchased this online separately from the tire changer. This particular one here is from Lucid Auto Works. And uh, I believe since I bought this one, uh, there's a number of uh, outfits out there that make these. And also there's varying degrees in which they are built. So they do have some DIY type ones where they'll provide you with the parts. And then it's up to you to assemble it and weld it all together and do that sort of thing and paint it. Um, some of them, I believe, come without the bearing uh, type. This particular one has some bearings and allows this to rotate nice and smooth. And I believe some of them are kind of more just like a friction type fit. Um, although I really haven't checked much into that. Uh, but this uh, this one has the ball bearings on it and it fits down really nice and it screws on there good. Um, I've had no issues with this. Um, these uh, tend to be a little bit more money. Um, and for some of you, it, it may be that this is cost prohibitive, just not worth it. Um, if you buy one of these fully assembled, I believe it can be right around the three to four hundred dollar range. If you get the uh, build your own, obviously significant cheaper. I think I've seen some without the uh, bearings that are probably around 90 bucks or so. So uh, anyway, uh, I just want to let you know, make it clear that it's not from Harbor Freight. 
uh, just the tire changer itself. So you may be wondering, uh, well, why do I get the adapter? I mean, we have a tire changer here from Harbor Freight that can change tires. The main reason I got the adapter is, well, two reasons. Um, number one, I think it makes it a little easier to do, but also the most more important reason, at least for me, was the fact that by using this deck bill here, this attachment, um, it basically eliminates a lot of the contact with the wheel itself, with the pry bars and that sort of thing. So you don't, uh, you're a lot less likely to damage the wheel. And if you're dealing with real nice wheels, you definitely want something like this and not just use the, the uh, tire changer as is from Harbor Freight because you're going to scar it up and that sort of thing. So anyway, again, the, the, my main reason for this is just to prevent wheel damage. All right, let's uh, start out with the very basics. Before you can use this, you have to mount it to something. And uh, that's one of the questions I've got a lot, you know, how did I secure it to the floor? Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. I've seen people hook these up to wood pallets, uh, bolt them into concrete. I've even seen them being attached to um, trailer hitches and they operate right off the back of your truck. Um, in my particular case, I decided just to mount it to the garage floor. So let me show you exactly what I did. All right, if you look at my floor here closely, you'll see some tape here. This is actually temporary, but I've been using it for quite some time. What I was gonna do was actually uh, get some uh, plugs that I could just screw in here when I'm done. Um, but I've been using the tape and it works pretty well. It keeps it waterproof, keeps water from going in here. But um, anyway, there's, there's some concrete anchors and uh, very easy to install. Just to uh, drill the hole for whatever specific size anchor you have. Uh, drill it into the concrete and then you run your bolt in and then it mushrooms the thing out from the bottom side. So uh, I probably still will at some point get some kind of flathead uh, bolt and then just thread it in there, maybe with like a little rubber seal or something to prevent water from getting in there when I pull the cars in. But uh, anyway, I just secured them into the floor and I know it's not the prettiest thing, but hey, it's a garage. And uh, the size bolts that I used here, these are, uh, I believe they're M10 by 1.5 bolts, and I got some little longer ones because they have to uh, accommodate for this height right here and the tire changer. Right, so let me measure those and I'll show you the size. And I just keep them attached uh, to the tire changer here in this plastic bag so they're always ready to go when I need it. And I also got uh, some washers here too so I don't uh, <clears throat> scar up the paint here when I uh, torque the bolt down. Um, it'll actually rub on the washer instead of the paint and just keep that a little nicer. As far as the length, you can see those are four inch bolts. And uh, for each of the bolts, I got two washers here. Um, one kind of secures itself down uh, to the base here and the other one's free to rotate. And you can put a little bit of lube there to prevent the bottom one from turning on that if you care about uh, the paint on your tire changer. So let's see if I told you right. I told you this was an M10 by 1.5. I think it's this guy right here. So let me thread in just to make sure. And yeah, that's the size I got, and it's been working perfectly. I didn't have to drill out the tire changer anymore. This is perfect size bolt. Now, there are other type anchors that you can get. Um, some of them are a stud that comes out of the ground like that, and then you can thread a nut on. The only reason I didn't go that route is I wanted to keep this nice and flush because I still bring things in here, park cars here, and that sort of thing. I also didn't want it to be a tripping hazard. So let's get all this tape off, and uh, let's go ahead and bolt the tire changer down to the floor. You know, this tape actually works pretty darn well. I mean, I know it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it does keep water from getting into the holes and also doesn't create any kind of tripping hazard either. You can tell it's been a while since I've used this. This tape has gotten very, very sticky. Okay, there we go. We got these down snug you don't really have to go to town on it because uh, most of the force is kind of uh, lateral like this not like trying to pull it up out so uh, don't over torque it uh, you don't want to destroy your concrete anchors next order of business is get the car up in the air and let's get these wheels off
Uh, the next thing I should probably mention here before we get started is that I do have two different heads. This is the one that came with the uh, Lucid adapter. And uh, this is one that I bought offline. Of course, I just bought the, the duck bill here. And then I created my own flange here and then welded it uh, to another piece of pipe. And the thing I like better about this one is this kind of hooks underneath the rim and kind of keeps things lined up better. Whereas, as you can see, this one here just doesn't have that capability. Before we can think about uh, getting the tire off the wheel and breaking the bead, we need to get the air out first. So I'll take the cap off and then I got this uh, Velcro remover. So I just go in there and twist it uh, counterclockwise till it comes out. And just let the air come out. Yeah, just looking at the side of this tire, you can see that it's starting to crack even on the sides here. Now, when breaking the bead on uh, some of the newer cars, you're gonna have to be a little careful because right here on the other end of this valve stem is a TPMS sensor that measures your tire pressure. This car's old enough, it doesn't have it, so I'm not gonna even worry. Uh, one thing that I found helpful uh, when using the bead breaker on this is to get this up and out of the way while you're working on it. So I just use a bungee, just hook it onto the end here and then up, and uh, this will flex down back and forth uh, as I use it, and it just kind of stays out of the way. It just makes it a little easier. Now, I know this isn't a real nice wheel that I'm gonna worry about. Um, it's, seen its better days, uh, but regardless, I don't want to damage the wheel anymore. And so what I like to do is uh, just put a towel down over the metal here. That way, when I set the uh, wheel down over it, there's no metal to metal contact, and you're less likely to scar up and mark the wheel. So anyway, I'll get this all lined up here. Okay, so I moved a uh, little bungee strap from here down to here, so it's out of the way, and I can put the pipe in. Okay, so I'll put this on the edge right here. We'll start downward. And let's just see if we can break this bead. All right, one thing I wanted to show you. Uh, this is the bar that came with the Harbor Freight tire changer. And uh, I'm gonna slide in here and then wrench down on it. And you can see that I've done some tires before that required quite a bit of force to break the bead. And uh, you can see that this is bent. <laughs> So, for the tougher ones, I kind of give up on that. And I got a much thicker bar here that I can put in, but this is definitely not going to bend. There we go. Now we can just kind of work our way around. We just have broken on the outside side. So, let's go ahead and flip it over and uh, break the bead on the inside. Now again, this is where the towel becomes really important. Uh, the outside you don't want to damage, so nice to have the towel in there for that. Okay. And once you have the bead broken all the way around, we can go ahead and put it on to the tire changer. Okay, just to let you know, I think I have this in one of my other videos, but I did make a small change to this tire changer. So I got some old wheel studs and then I chopped them off so they're a little shorter. And I drilled some holes into the base here where they line up with the wheel. And then I just push them up here. And then I use the uh, factory uh, lug nuts to bolt it down. And it just is way more secure than the uh, little hook that they provide you with here. Oh, let's go ahead and put our tire and wheel combo on here. Nope, oh, forgot one thing. I need to pop out the center cap first, right here. All you need is this little screwdriver or something, and then just tap on it from the out from the outside, and then just tap on it from the inside, and then push it out. Now, let's go ahead and set her down here, and then I will take uh, my. Wheel stud here, push it up from the bottom. And just thread this on. But I don't want to push it on too tight right now. I want to get the centering cone on here and center it up first. And now we'll get our uh, centering cone here. Slide it over. And uh, 
Then we'll put our adapter on here to push down on it, kind of center it, and then we'll tighten up these side bolts here. Okay, with our centering cone on, we can now throw it on the adapter. Then this will start to push down on the cone. So as you tighten this, kind of jiggle this and make sure that it gets centered. And then uh, once you're certain that it's centered, then put your bar on and then just give it a little bit more of a turn so it's on there nice and secure. And once you're a little secure, let's go ahead and put our duck bill on. Get this in and under there, and then we'll just tighten up these nuts here. Okay, and uh, just go all the way around and make sure it doesn't hang up anywhere and that this is centered so it uh, stays, this stays the same distance. Okay, now we can go ahead and try to pull our tire off. Okay, before you ever try to take a tire off or put one on, always use some lube. It makes things a lot easier. So I got this big can of it here and uh, a little applicator brush. And uh, just put this all around the perimeter. And uh, believe me, it'll come off much, much easier if you just have a little bit of lube on here. All right, uh, let's go and give this a shot now. Pull that up. And oh, another one that kind of stays here. And we'll move it around. There we go. All right, well, the tire's off. This is a great opportunity to clean up the inside of the rim where the bead is. This will help prevent any kind of future leaks. Oftentimes, a new tire, if this is not cleaned, will actually have a small leak from the uh, side here where the bead is. So anyway, let's get this cleaned up. Okay, well, cleaning the inner side of the rim here where the bead is. Not looking for perfection or anything, but uh, you definitely want to make it so you don't you don't feel any anything here you want it nice and smooth here i can feel it's very rough and rigid so i'm just taking some scotch right and uh, just kind of sanding that down until where it's smooth if it's smooth it'll seal well but if it's got some bumps and lumps there um, you could have a potential leak with the wheel cleaned up pretty good let's go ahead and get one of our new tires on now, as I mentioned before, uh, these new tires, they have an inside and outside. The one outside is labeled as inside. And we have the side labels outside. All right, so got the inside of the tire here facing in the upward position. So I'm gonna put some lube onto this inner bead here. Just like so. And with it all lubed up, we should just be able to push this on. Now we can move up the other side. Okay, we're gonna have to get a hold that now. Okay, Let's see if we can get by with just one. Looks like it's going to do the trick. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull our tool off now. Okay. Let's try to get her popped on. Light's working. And there we go. Okay, and after doing that a few more times, we've got them all done. Now we need to go ahead and balance the tires. 
Okay, next thing we need to do is balance the tires. So I got the bubble balancer out here and um, just installed the top part onto the pin. So give it a little swivel there and uh, make sure that it stops with the bubble dead even. And that looks, that looks to be right on. So if it didn't, you could adjust these screws here until it was perfectly level. Um, so anyway, we can set the center cap off, leave the cap off, and then we'll go ahead and transfer this over to the bubble balancer. Okay, let's go ahead and move the uh, wheel and tire over to them. Over to the balancer, and center cap off, uh, make sure this uh, goes all the way down and centers itself. And now we can take a look and see what the bubble, where the bubble resides. And it looks like the bubble's a little closer to this side over here. So we want to go over here and start adding weight until that is dead center. Okay, I have a set of weights here and um, got two different sizes here. Here's a half ounce and then here's quarter ounce. And uh, this looks fairly far off. So I'm going to start out with the heavier weight here, the half ounce. Now, before you uh, attach any weights to it, we just kind of want to take off some weights here and then just kind of set them over here. And you want them at the same radius in which the weights are going to uh, adhere to the surface here. So you don't want it in too far or too far out. If you have it further out, it's going to have more of an effect. If you have it in closer, it'll have less of an effect. So it's important that you have it at the same radius as where you're actually going to stick it onto. So I'll start with one here and then set it here and uh, see what the balance looks like at that point. Okay, got the one weight right here. Set it right here. And that brings it pretty darn close. I'll add uh, just one more. See if we can get it spot on. Okay, just set another one right here. And just kind of tap it just to move a little bit and overcome any friction. And let me show you here. It looks like the bubble is dead center at this point. So I'm going to just leave it there and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, clean up the surface here and fix the weights uh, to the inner portion of the wheel. Okay, I got the uh, wheel off the uh, balancer now. And there was already some weights about where we're going to put it, which is actually, we're going to put our weights right here at the end of this spoke. And you can see it's quite dirty there. So I got a scour pad and I'm just going to clean this up until we get it nice and clean. Then I'll wipe it off with some... Uh, some water, make sure all the dirt and debris is off, and uh, then we can go ahead and stick the weight on there and then recheck. Now, one thing I should mention here is this is a, what we call a static balance, which means it's balanced when the wheel's not moving. However, when it starts spinning, uh, which would be a dynamic type balance, which is what they do at the tire shops, um, you could have an imbalance at that point. So what, and, and basically, if you have a dynamic imbalance, that means that, you know, part of the wheel maybe on the inner side is uh, heavier than portions of the wheel outside. Um, so it only, it only matters when the wheel is spinning and it'll try to wobble. So in other words, um, let me explain it this way. If I were to put a weight right here, and then one right here, it'd be perfectly balanced. But if I offset it and move this one down and keep this one up, then it would still be statically balanced. But as you can see, when you start to spin it, the weight at this point is gonna pull more. And so it'll try to wobble the wheel back and forth like that. And so that's the difference between static and dynamic balance. As long as everything is uniform, um, cross-sectionally through here, then a static type balance will work just fine. And with thin wheels, it's not such a big issue, but you get fatter wheels and there's more of a potential to have that imbalance from in to out. And so that's where it would, uh, be important to get dynamic balance. So it's always worth trying the static balance first. And um, if you still have vibration, then obviously you're gonna have to take it to a shop and have them spin it and do a dynamic balance. So anyway, we got this pretty clean right here. So let's just spray a little fluid on here and then we'll really clean it up. And get all the debris out there so these weights will stick real well. And uh, these weights, they got a little, uh, we'll just peel off the uh, protective cover here. And uh, we'll just uh, stick them right here along 
near the other one. So right there, and we'll put the other one right there. And then we'll put it back onto the balancer and uh, verify that we have a good balance. And I think it's gonna be just fine. Okay, so there's our weights. Let's put it back onto the balancer and see how it looks. Sit around here. Again, make sure it goes down that cone, kind of push it so it centers itself. And uh, kind of just move it a little bit until it, it comes to a stop on its own. And this is looking pretty good. Um, all right, so you can see here, looks like it's pretty much dead center. So we know that these wheels are statically balanced and uh, we'll take it out on the road, give it a test. And if we feel any vibration, we know we're gonna have to take it in the shop and have a dynamic balance. The uh, new tires have been mounted on the wheels all the way around. It's time to go take this thing for a test drive. And uh, that's all for now. So I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.